Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Electrical Code Academy. And I'm, my name is Paul Abernathy and I'm your instructor for this episode. Um, if you've never seen anything that we've done before at the Fast Tracks program, um, you really need to look at our website and you need to watch the demo videos. Um, I've been doing this for over 32 years. If you wanna know who I am, Google me for a second or you can go to the front of the National Electrical Code and see that I'm also listed in Code Panel 5 and code panel 17. Now, I don't say that to brag. The reason I say that is when you're trying to learn the National Electrical Code, you want to learn from trusted sources. Um, there's a lot of people out there that, that teach the National Electrical Code, um, but do they have the pedigree? Do they have the background? Can they convey things to you in a way that's, that's easy to understand? And that's what I strive to do. I've spent my entire career doing that. And I've had literally over 50,000 students in my career since 1989. So um, I started actually back in, in 86 uh, in uh, my programs at the vocational school. And I went on to own my own electrical contracting businesses multiple times. Um, and I've been an electrical inspector, electrical engineer for a large municipality, uh, code supervisor for a large municipality, and I've also been one of the NEMA rep regional experts for the National Electrical Manufacturers Association until I also head up a codes and standards division for one of the leading manufacturers of wire and cable in the country. So I've had my hands in a little bit of everything, but the one thing that I'm most proudest of is being a master electrician in multiple states and working my way with my hands up through. Way more prouder than anything I've done in engineering is being a master electrician means the most to me. So learning the National Electrical Code is something that everybody needs to add to their repertoire. Okay, you can be good with the hands, you can be good at bending conduit and, and all that, um, but do you really know why you're doing things, how to lay out circuits, what they mean? Um, you do things off of repetition and you don't understand what's code and what's not. Our programs teach you the National Electrical Code. You'll be better at your job, you'll be a better leader, you have less stress because you're gonna know how to work the NEC, and be honest with you, our course will teach you an awful lot. So. You don't even have to be studying for an exam to be in our program. You just want a better understanding of the National Electrical Code uh, just to make your job less stressful by knowing where to go in the code book or building up that memory of code knowledge, okay? Now, if you want information on our programs, right there, go to FastTrackSystem.com. If you're studying for an electrical exam, Fast Tracks Black is the one you want. It works in every state, okay? We just teach the NEC. I don't teach OSHA. I don't teach the local re regulations in your state. I only teach the NEC. That's the portion that people tend to struggle with. You can get pamphlets on local rules and regulations and OSHA. Very simple. But the code is what stumbles people, whether it's the calculations or the code lookup. So I'm the one that's going to be able to help you with that. You can, If you're already licensed and you want to deep dive into residential, we have residential program, that's the Fast Tracks Red. We have the green program, which is a commercial electrical wiring. We've got the blue, which is industrial. We have a grounding and bonding course that is probably the best course out there. Um, you get access to these for an entire year, 24 seven. Um, there is no better course than our Fast Track series. And we've got something for everybody, even electrical theory. We've got that as well. We even added a new course for electricians who work with HVAC systems. Uh, all the electrical troubleshooting, how to deal with certain situations that you may encounter. We have a course on that as well. So again, go to our website. If there is a demo, watch the demo and you'll learn more about our products. Okay, you're saying, Paul, you're just selling me. You're just giving me a commercial. Well, that's what I have to do. Now let's get into the course material, okay? So what are we gonna learn today? Well, in a previous episode, we talked about the receptacle spacing and, and how you would do the spacing out in uh, general purpose applications, like in uh, living rooms, bedrooms. We did the six foot, 12 foot rule, but we didn't talk about kitchens, dining rooms, and like breakfast rooms. And so we broke that out into this episode. So we're gonna talk about all things to do with kitchen, dining rooms, and breakfast rooms. We're also gonna cover receptacle placements but we're gonna get into all those topics uh, here in this episode. So let's go on and get into it and let's get started. All right, so here we go, folks. If you're in our Fast Tracks program, this looks awful familiar. We're in unit seven. 
And this is 7 1, dealing with kitchens, dining rooms, and breakfast rooms. And we're talking about receptacles and the branch circuit ratings for the receptacles. So, this is what the topic is about. And this is just building onto a previous episode, again, where we talked about normal receptacle placements and spacing and things like that. All right, let's get into it here. Receptacle placement in a kitchen is determined by 210.52a and c. So let me kind of clarify this. So in a previous episode, we talked about 210.52a. That's a six foot, 12 foot rule, right? Going around the room in a break in the floor line, Along the wall is where you start your measurements. Go six feet from that break, and then you could go a maximum of 12 feet to the next receptacle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please pause. Go back and watch that episode, and then watch this episode, because that's the spacing. Because in a kitchen, you still got your wall spacing. When we're talking about the countertop, that's different. You still got your wall spacing that you have to do, and that's the six foot, 12 foot, and that's what we mean by 210.52a. You still got to have that wall spacing receptacles, still got to have them. Now, the C, which is 210.52c, is very specific to the countertop in a kitchen. Okay, so you have the wall space requirement, and then you have the countertop wall space requirement. And of course, you'll have islands and peninsular requirements as well uh, for those receptacle placements. Okay, now. All of the general receptacle placement provisions are found in 210.52a. They're going to apply. Like I said, you still got to have them around the wall uh, normally, uh, as well as the additional requirements that are in 210.52c. And again, that's talking about the various countertops. So both of these rules are going to apply. So if anybody ever asks you what are the spacing and placement requirements in kitchens, well, 210.52a for the wall space around the wall. And then 210.52c for the countertop wall space, as well as islands and peninsulas and things like that. So got to meet all those rules. So wanted to make sure that you're aware of all of that. All right, so now we've got, you probably come to be familiar with our illustrations, some of the best illustrations in the industry. So here's your countertop. Okay, we're going to talk about that here in a second. So A, A right here, these receptacles says receptacles installed on a 20 amp small appliance brand circuit may be rated either 15 or 20 amperes okay and that's covered in table 210.21b3 now we covered this in another video so hopefully you're subscribed and watching all of my videos because in this video we talked about receptacles and you can go watch that at fast tracks tube um, and it basically tells me that if it's a 20 amp brand circuit then I can have a 15 or a 20 amp rated receptacle on that 20 amp small appliance brand circuit, right? So I've got a duplex and that duplex can be either 15 or 20, okay? And that can be serving that countertop. Now remember as always, how many small appliance brand circuits do you have to have as a minimum in your dwelling? You have to have at least two, okay? At least two. And where do you get that? 210.11C. Let's go to talk about it. You have C1, C2, C3. So for, for kitchens, um, you're going to have the small appliance, you're going to have the bathroom, you're going to have a laundry one, and then you're going to have a garage requirement for brand circuits, okay? But you have to have at least two for the small appliance, and they have to serve the countertop, okay? The countertop locations. Now, all receptacles installed to serve the kitchen countertop surface shall have GFCI protection. That is in 210.8A6, talking about the countertops, right? Now, if you were to pause right now, when you see these chevrons, as always, you're going to pause and you're going to go look at that code section. But you're going to see other requirements in there. For example, any receptacles within six feet of a sink as well. But when it comes to countertops, all of those receptacles that serve a countertop have to be GFCI protected. Okay, and that's all in accordance with 210.8A6. That one specifically is for the countertop requirement. Now, we do have videos that are talking about GFCI requirements in 210.8. So again, you get a chance. Again, make sure you subscribe, share with everybody in your company so that everybody can be on the same page. And if you want to get into a great program, folks, right there, FastTrackSystem.com. We get deep into all this information. Then you can also come in Wednesday nights and bring any scenario you may have to me personally, and we can all learn together. That's the 
kind of what we're doing here in this community. That's what the fast track system's all about. All right, so let's go to B. So that was A. So here's B. Here's a little appliance here. It's a toaster oven. It says the maximum distance to any receptacle measured horizontally along the wall line is 24 inches. And where do we get that? 210.52C1. Make sure you go look that up. That's in Chevron's. All right, pause the video. We tell the students to do this all the time. When you see Chevron's, pause it. Go read the code. Now, some people ask me, Paul, how do I know what to highlight in my code book? That's fair, because there's so much stuff in this document here. How do you know what to highlight? Because if you end up highlighting everything, then it kind of defeats the, the purpose. So one of the advice that I give folks is to highlight things that we call out. So anytime you see a Chevron, go highlight it. But only highlight the portion that is significant, okay? But anytime you see those chevrons, that's a good thing that you should highlight and only highlight the significant portions of the code reference, right? That way you don't get everything highlighted and it kind of defeats the purpose, all right? Now let's look at it this way. So the easy way to understand this is countertop receptacle placement is to imagine that you had a toaster with 24 inch cord. Anywhere this toaster is placed around this countertop, there should be a receptacle within reach. So what does it say in the code, 210.52C1? It has to be within two feet of the edge of the sink. This kind of breaks the countertop. So I have to have one within two feet of that. So there it is right there. Could it be at one foot? Yes, but the maximum is two feet. So this one, max two feet. So anything put here would be able to reach it. Anything put here would be able to reach it. And then the maximum distance between the receptacles would be four feet. Because if I put this toaster right here in the middle, it's going to be able to reach this receptacle or this receptacle. If I move it closer to this side of that four feet, then it can't reach this one, but it most certainly can reach this one. So that's why we have something called the two foot, four foot rule. Okay. Now let's look at some notes here. It says in kitchens, pantries, break rooms, dining rooms, and similar areas of a dwelling unit. Um, circuits that serve the countertop surface receptacles and general purpose receptacles shall be 20 ampere small appliance brand circuits. So that is 210.52B1. All right, let me make sure I'm, everybody's clear. The same small appliance brand circuit that serves these receptacles on the counter are also going to serve the receptacles around your kitchen, around the room. Okay, so if you have a minimum of two small appliance brand circuits per code, can you have more than two? Absolutely. You can have three, four, five, whatever you want. But those small appliance brand circuits are going to serve not only the countertop receptacles, but also the wall receptacles all around your kitchen. Okay, and your pantry and in your dining room. All of those are served by those small appliance brand circuits. Now, I could have two for the kitchen and a third one doing the dining room. Uh, and all that, that would be fine. I can have more than two, but I have to have at least two, okay? Note, receptacle outlets are only required to be installed behind a range, counter-mounted cooking unit, or sink if the area behind the range, counter-mounted cooking unit, or sink is 12 inches or greater, okay? when installed parallel to an adjoining wall or 18 inches or greater if installed in a corner. Okay, so that's under the exception. So we're gonna look at the code for this. Why? Because a code has great illustrations to hammer this note home. So let's go to the code book. That's where you see this. Uh, when we see these chevrons, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go to the code. So let's do it. All right, so we're over here in the code. Let's go to 210.52. And here is where we start getting down. And here is what we're talking about right here, folks. So this could be a sink. This could be a cooktop or whatever. So this space behind it is what it's talking about. If this is like a extended or extension face kind of uh, in the counter sticks out a little bit and maybe the cooktop or the range sticks out, what about this space behind it? Because as you saw in the other picture, the measurement comes from the edge of the sink two feet, right? But what about this space behind it? Well, the space except 
uh, space exempt from wall line if it's what? It's less than 12 inches. Okay. So if this space right here is less than 12 inches, then guess what? It's considered a break in the counter, and you're simply going to draw a line from the edge of the sink, the cooktop, whatever it is, draw it back, and that's where your line starts, and you have to have a receptacle within 24 inches. Right? There you go. And we'll read the code language too. Don't, don't worry, we'll read the code language. Now, what about this one? So this is the one that's talking about with the corner. So in this one right here, if this is a sink, a cooking unit, um, or range, or whatever it is built in, then the measurement behind it to the corner here, this space is exempt from being considered wall space. All of this is exempt if it is less than 18 inches. So if this space right here is less than 18 inches, then I can forget it even exists. Okay. Now, reading this code language. Okay, so this is the space. So we want to make sure that you read all of this code language. Here it is right here. Okay. It says, in kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar areas of dwelling units, receptacle outlets for countertops and workspaces that are 12 inches or wider. Oh, that's not the one we want. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not the one we want. We want the reference. Uh, it's just the figure. Okay. Kind of looked at the wrong reference here. So we have, to, we have to look at the figure. That's what this one is. It's all about the figure. Okay. So right here, again, we'll look at it. This space right here. I don't know what I was like. So, oh, by the way, since we're here, this one right here for the 12 inches, that means on the countertop, if you have like an efficiency apartment and you have a small countertop, if it's at least 12 inches wide, then a receptacle has to be there. That's what it's saying. If it's only six inches wide, then you don't have to have a receptacle there. That's what that means. Okay, so every countertop or workspace that's at least 12 inches has to have a receptacle. Um, it's an interesting question. People say to me, Paul, what if you're wiring, uh, and we'll get back to the to the counters and the the, uh, the sink and the cooktop and all that. We'll get that in a second. But let me tell you, some people say, Paul, what if it's an efficiency apartment and I have a, uh, a counter and it has maybe a cooktop in it or, or a range in it, and maybe the counter beside it is 18 inches. Would I require a receptacle there? Because remember it says within 20 feet, you can go up to 24 inches. But this counter, this cabinet, this counter is only 18 inches. Do I have to have a receptacle there? And the answer is yes. Based on what? Based on this right here. Eight, 12 inches or wider. Shall be installed in accordance with 210.52C1 through C3. Means I've got to have a receptacle there. Now, somebody says, well, Paul, what if that's my only counter? And I have to have, by the code, a minimum of two small appliance brand circuits there. Would I put two single, uh, two duplexes there? And one is one circuit and one's the other? Or could I put a duplex receptacle there, break the tab on it, and then the top be one brand circuit and the bottom be the other 20 amp brand circuit, small appliance brand circuit? And the answer to that is absolutely. You could do that if you wanted to do that. Or you might put in a quad in there and you have four receptacles, two duplexes mounted in a two gang box. And then one receptacle is one circuit and the other receptacle is the other circuit. Still have to have at least two small appliance brand circuits there, okay? And of course they can actually split out and also catch all the other receptacles in the kitchen as well also. But as far as serving the countertop, that would be fine. But if the counter is at least 12 inches or greater, then I have to have a receptacle to serve that countertop. That's what that was there. That wasn't reading. So let's go back real quick. And we saw the illustration. And so this is your counter in your kitchen. And you have a sink. Let's just call this a sink for simplicity's sake. And here's a sink in the corner one here, corner mounted one here. Okay. All right. And so in this case, again, this space behind it, if X is less than 12 inches, ignore it. And the measurement starts here. Imaginary line comes back and you measure this way. And you have to have one within two feet of this imaginary line, which connects back to the wall. Perfectly fine. You don't have to count the space. Down here, same thing. If this space and a corner mounted one, if between here and the corner is less than 18 inches, 
then you can ignore this space. And the measurement starts by drawing an imaginary line. Let me bring this up here so you can see it. An imaginary line right here, see my mouse? Right here, draw a line back to the wall, and this is where your measurement starts, right from that contact point this way. Same on this side, measurement starts this way, okay? So bringing us back to our course material, that's what it says right here, right? So a sink behind our range or cooking counter mounting unit or sink is 12 inches or greater, okay? Where installed parallel, again, if it's 12 inches or greater, then guess what? I have to put a receptacle. It's just part of the wall space. So I have to count it, and I might get a receptacle back there, okay? Still got to do the two foot, four foot. Uh, if it is less than 12 inches, ignore it. And same with the corner mounted one, right? Down here. If it's 18 inches or greater, then a receptacle has to be installed. If it is less than 18 inches, forget about it. You don't have to have a receptacle back there. You don't start your measurement except for at the corner of the sink or cooktop or range or whatever it is. Pretty simple, right? So this is just, uh, just uh, you know, over at the code, this is just an illustration, right? Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't see too many of these. Usually the sink is actually in the counter, so it would, that, that space behind it's only like, uh, two or three or four inches anyway, like we see up here in the picture. Let's go back to the picture right here. This is typically what we see, right? So this space behind here is basically a break in this wall line. And so your measurement starts from the edge this way and the edge this way, okay? That's typically what we see, right? But I just want you to know that there are illustrations uh, in the code book in case you get con confused about that. Okay, other outlets fed from the small appliance brand circuits. So we've been talking about the small appliance brand circuits. So what else could be on that small appliance brand circuit? So we pretty much covered spacing. Uh, but in order to kind of get this video up a little bit, we're going to kind of go into um, what other things can be on that small appliance brand circuit. Okay, we know how to space it now. Two foot, four foot rule. Uh, we know that that same small appliance brand circuit has to also pick up the other receptacles that are in the actual kitchen, pantry, dining room. And can we have more than two? Absolutely. So we could have two that stay in the kitchen and the third one picks up the dining room or the pantry. That's fine. Not a problem. But you have to have at least two. But let's talk about what else can actually be on that small appliance brand circuit. Okay. All right. So here we see a nice illustration it kind of lays out what can be in a kitchen. And this is, again, a lot of people ask questions about this. So A, A is right here. So this is called a clock outlet. Typically, this is, we don't see these today. Uh, back in the day, it was actually a recessed uh, outlet with the actual uh, uh, receptacle recessed back. And so it actually would, uh, the, the clock would plug into it. It would sit flush on the wall, okay? Um, well. If that's the case, there is an exception to 210.52b2 on what can be on these small appliance brand circuits. Well, I can have a dedicated clock outlet if I want. Um, I, again, I don't see them anymore, but I could put that on there. It's not really going to pull anything. It's, it's, it has no real significance to the load, but that's okay under exception number one. That's not a problem. Now, what about next? Let's see. Well, this is a hood fan so you might have a range here and you've got a hood fan there and your exhaust fan and you're thinking hey can that be on this small appliance brand circuit okay a hood fan is not permitted on a small appliance brand circuit 210.52b2 is gives us that direction and says it cannot be on a small appliance brand circuit also just because we're talking about it a microwave could not be on the small appliance brand circuit, okay? The manufacturers of that microwave are gonna have in their instructions to run a dedicated or individual brand circuit to that microwave. Well, you have to follow their instructions, okay? But also looking at the load that it draws and it's typically cord and plug, then you have to be careful because we're gonna have to limit things to uh, like 80% of the rating. So 
Just know that the microwave cannot be on the small appliance brand circuit. All right, next, C. And look at this receptacle that's just outside. You're thinking, oh man, I have an outside receptacle. It's in that common wall. Nobody's looking. I'll just take my small appliance and drop it out there and hit that outside receptacle. Absolutely not. Outdoor receptacles are not permitted on the small appliance brand circuit. Where is that covered? 210.52B2. Do me a favor. Pause. Go read it. Read what it says about it and then come back. That's what we do in the Fast Tracks program. So if you want to get the most out of this, you need to be moving in and out of your code book in order to get, you know, don't be lazy on me. Okay, don't be lazy. Move in and out, in and out, in and out. Okay, so let's go to the code 210.52B2. And I will show you that to show you understand that that's what it says. 210.52. And we'll go down here to B2. No other outlets. Now, when we see no other outlets, folks, that means lighting, no other outlets, no lighting outlets, no other outlets outside, those type of things, no other outlets. So it says, and here are the exceptions that we've been, we've been talking about right here. It says, no, uh, the two or more small appliance brand circuits specified in 210.52B1 shall have no other outlets. And again, don't get locked into thinking outlets means receptacles alone because it does not. I know it's very common for us to look around a room and go, oh, look, there's an outlet, there's an outlet, but that's true. That's an outlet box. But what you're pointing at that you put an attachment plug in, that's a device, okay? So people refer to that as outlets all the time, but it's really a device, okay? But we know what you're talking about, so nobody really gets all worked up about it, but I want you to learn the terminologies. It's gonna make you a better electrician altogether. Uh, and it's significant because another outlet would be a lighting outlet inside of a kitchen. So I can't have the kitchen lighting on with the small appliance brand circuit because that would be an outlet and I can't have any other outlets on it. Now, here are the exceptions. The first one right here that we just looked at, that's the one for the clock. That's okay to be on the small appliance brand circuit. The next one is exception number two. It says, receptacles installed to provide power to supplemental equipment and lighting on gas-fired ranges, ovens, and counter-mounted cooking units. That's okay. So what does that mean? Well, maybe I have a gas range. Maybe I have a gas cooktop. And all I'm trying to do is supply a receptacle for the igniter, right? Well, if that's the case, and in a lot of homes with gas cooking, you'll have a receptacle down there to plug in the igniter, electric igniter. Can that be on the small appliance brand circuit? Absolutely. Based on what? Exception number two. Those are the only two occasions where you can have other things on that small appliance brand circuit. Can't have microwaves, can't have hoods, uh, hood fans, none of that type of things can be on, okay? That's very important for you to realize, all right? So let's come back here. Also, make it really clear that, ooh, just because maybe this is a counter and it overlooks a living room, these receptacles on this side of this dividing wall are serving the living room, okay? They cannot be on the small appliance brand circuit if they're on the side and this wall is designated for the living room. It's serving that space, then no, sir, it cannot be on the small appliance branch circuit. Important to realize all that. So it's very specific for what can and cannot be on that small appliance branch circuit. Now here, just so you see things like, you know, D, D says the lighting outlet is not permitted on the small appliance branch circuit. We looked at that. And then E says, Circuits, feeding, receptacles in kitchens, pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and similar areas shall not feed receptacles outside of those areas. That's what those small appliance brand circuits are for. They're certainly not for feeding the living room. Okay, all that makes sense. Note, a 120 volt receptacle installed for, and it actually should be a 125 volt because that's a, 
a NEMA rating for the receptacle, but it is a 120 volt branch circuit, so we'll let it go here since it is kind of talking about the small appliance branch circuit. But it says a 120 volt receptacle installed for a gas cooking equipment can be fed from a small appliance brand circuit. And again, that's what we saw, exception number two. And that again, folks, is why it's so important to stop and go look it up. I can't overemphasize that. That is how our program works. And if you're not gonna work the program, I really, do me a favor, don't waste your money. Uh, I wanna help you. But don't think buying our course that you'll just be able to learn this by just osmosis. You gotta put in the effort. You gotta follow the plan. Just give me that time. Give me that effort and you will learn the NEC. I've committed my life to this and you will learn it. All right. So we talked about the countertop spacing. And so we're going to look at it even more. We're getting even deeper with this episode. So we kind of touched on it. But now we're going to put all of that we learned into practice. Ready? All right. Kitchen countertop placement. All receptacles installed to serve the kitchen countertop surface shall be GFCI protected. That is 210.8A6. Remember, go look that up. It's in Chevron's. The branch circuit in a kitchen shall be 20 ampere circuits. Again, that's in 210.11C1 and 210.52B1, saying that they have to be 20 amp branch circuits, and you have to have a minimum of what? At least two. So it says right here, a minimum of two small appliance brand circuits are required for receptacles serving kitchen countertops. It also re reiterates that in 210.52B3 as well. Now it says either or both of these small appliance brand circuits may feed other receptacles in the kitchen, pantry, breakfast room, and dining room. Of course they can. So you could have both of those, say on your countertop, half of your countertop is one small appliance brand circuit, then it goes out and does the wall receptacles, and then the other one goes out and goes and hits any receptacles you might have in a pantry, and then comes out and maybe picks up the receptacles in a nook area, because that's a similar area to like a dining area. So it could pick up all of those, that's fine. But can you have more than two? Absolutely, if you wanna have a third small appliance, go for it, a fourth one, Go for it. No problem with that. Just make sure when you do a load calculation that you account for 1500 VA for every small appliance brand circuit. But don't worry, we talk about that when we do load calculations for single family dwellings. Again, if you haven't watched that video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It is available. And if you want to see it right now, go over to FastTracksTube.com and subscribe. It's $125 annually. That helps support all this that we do. Again, so we thank you. It's a small amount to pay. I promise you, you'll get more out of it than the cost of it. But to make it even better for you, I'm going to give you a discount. If you check out on Fast Tracks Tube, that's F A S T T R A X T U B E dot com, use the coupon code 25 OFF. That's 25 O F F, all caps then you'll get $25 off and it'll only cost you $100. And again, it's a way to support our channel. Uh, and we're moving towards a subscription platform. Uh, and we're gonna bring you more videos from not just me, from other educators all in one location with a bunch of neat features that you would never find on YouTube. Promise you, it's gonna be a great experience. And it works perfect on your mobile phone. All right, it's very adaptive. All right, so let's look here. Now, also, Receptacles located more than 20 inches above the countertop or work surface are, uh, are allowed, but they do not count in the required receptacle spacing. Remember we talked about this in a previous video, whereas if you had a receptacle that was above five and a half feet around, let's say, in a bedroom where you're putting a receptacle for, let's say, a flat screen TV, that receptacle, if it's above five and a half feet, it can't count in your spacing of the room receptacles. Well, the same thing goes for this when you're doing countertop receptacles. If the receptacle's above 20 inches, it doesn't mean it can't be there, but it can't count as the small appliance brand circuits, okay? Also, uh, the receptacles that are on the small appliance brand circuit, also, those receptacles that you put up high really should not be on the small appliance brand circuit if it's for something like the microwave or something else. So be very careful in your placement. If you're gonna put the receptacles 
to serve the countertop, then you don't want them higher than 20 inches. Now, a lot of times people don't want them on the backsplash, but they have this underhang under the cabinet above the counter, and you can put like plug mold up there would meet this requirement as long as it's not higher than what? 20 inches. Then it will count towards receptacles for your two foot, four foot spacing requirement, okay? All right, other thing, receptacles install inside of appliance garages are permitted, but they do not count as the required countertop receptacle. That's in 210.52C3. What are we talking about? What's an appliance garage? Well, I don't have a picture for that, but on your counter, if you have this roll top, like a little cubby that you put your toaster in and things like that, and it's actually fixed in place, uh, say in a corner, then that breaks the wall line. You can have receptacles in there, but they don't hit meet the spacing requirement. So you'd have to start your measurement at the edge of that appliance garage, and then you'd have to have one within two feet, right? Um, because you, you could put receptacles in there, but again, they're inside of a cabinet, like a cupboard, and they don't meet the spacing requirement. You can have extra ones in there if you want, that's fine but they won't meet the spacing rules. All right, so let's look at this illustration here. We've got some A, B, and C. We've got some good callouts here. So a typical kitchen, right? Here's your wall going around your kitchen. You come into your kitchen, and you've got your counter. Your sink is in the, in the, in the counter, and over here you've got, this is a refrigerator, all right? And you've got a little counter here at the end of the refrigerator. All right, all these things that we talked about earlier are now going to start making sense to you. A, the maximum distance to any receptacle along the wall line of the counter measured horizontally is 24 inches. So here's the break in the counter for the sink. I have to have one. I can't go more than 24 inches and have a receptacle. Then I can go up to, to four feet because if I go right here in the middle, I'm within two feet of this receptacle and I'm also within two feet of this receptacle. So that's the two foot, four foot rule. Now here's the edge down here at the bottom, here's the edge of the counter. I have to have one within two feet of the edge. Kind of like a break in the wall line when we did the six foot, 12 foot. Same here, this is the edge of the counter. I have to have one within two feet. So I come in two feet, put one, then I can go four feet, put one. And if that one's also within two feet of the actual sink, then I'm okay. Can it be within one feet of the sink? Yep. Can it be 18 inches from the sink? Yep, that's fine. It just can't be more than two feet. And the same thing over here, have one within two feet of the edge. Think of this sink as actually breaking the wall line. It makes it easier for you to understand. So I'm gonna have one within two feet, and then I can go up to four feet, and then I can go up to another four feet. And this is the break in the cabinet right here where the refrigerator is. I gotta have it make sure that it's within two feet of the end of this counter. Okay, this one is. And this is the break right here. And then this piece of counter right here is at least 12 inches. Now, if this had been less than 12 inches, then I wouldn't need anything there. But this is 12 inches as it shows here on the diagram. So I have to have a receptacle here. All of these receptacles serving the countertop have to be GFCI protected. Now, notice this receptacle here that's serving the refrigerator. Now, typically, that is also required to be on the small appliance brand circuit. But as you saw earlier, there is an exception that says that this receptacle could be 15 amps or greater, and it could be an individual brand circuit. It doesn't have to be on the small appliance, but the rules in the code act like it's supposed to be on the small appliance, but then it gives you the exception to bring an individual brand circuit to it if you want to, and that's fine. Also, since it does not serve a countertop, it would not be required to be GFCI protected. Unless, of course, if you're familiar with 210.8, if this receptacle happened to be within six feet of a sink, then it would be required to be what? GFCI protected. In this case, it's a long way from the sink, so it would not be GFCI protected, okay? Uh, now, can it be on GFCI? Absolutely, everybody talks about ranges, I mean, uh, refrigerators tripping GFCIs. You know what, I've been doing this for many years. That doesn't just happen unless there's something wrong with the compressor of the refrigerator or something. Our refrigerator in my house is on GFCI and it's run perfectly fine and it's never tripped it. And I have one of those big Samsung refrigerators. Never had a problem, okay? So even though it's not required to be on GFCI, it could be. Just remember, you can't put a GFCI receptacle back here. Why? 
because in 2.10.8, they're required to be readily accessible. And it would not be readily accessible for testing if it was behind a big refrigerator. Okay, makes sense. So again, most of this, you could all these out here, you could put a GFCI in the very first one, and then everything downstream would be protected, or you could put GFCI in the panel and it protects all the receptacles in here. Okay. All right, so this is where we're at. And so D right here, that's not required. It's not the countertop. So again, that doesn't have to be GFCI. Now, again, and this one right here, again, is reminding you that E says that any countertop or workspace that is 12 inches or wider is going to have to have a receptacle. So all of these chevrons. So let me tell you something real quick for you students that are studying for the code uh, to take your exam, whether you're in our program or not. If you're watching this video, don't be in a hurry. If you think this video is long winded, I'm sorry. That's just how I teach. So look, make sure you pause the video. Every one of these go to these code references, read it, try to absorb it, and then come back and again read the, the summary here or kind of sometimes this is just basically a um, uh, giving you a basically a um, uh, I'm, I'm, for some reason I'm lacking the word uh, a synopsis of what it says or sometimes it's word for word. Um, but when you do that, then you're gonna get better at understanding the code and you jump back and forth and then you get to look at an illustration and go, okay, this all makes sense now, all right? That's ballistic training. It helps you understand everything. Fast track students are used to this, uh, but you need to get used to that in your training. That's why if you're buying just exam questions, that is not the way to learn the NEC. It's not. You might get lucky, but again, it's, it's not the, the preferred way to learn the NEC, okay? All right, remember, here is C, and again, it's why it's pointing to this, it's just to remind you, the receptacles that are not serving the countertop are not required to be GFCI protected, unless, of course, they're within six feet of a sink, then uh, the top inside edge of the sink uh, or bowl, then it would be required to be uh, GFCI protected. Important to remember that. All right, caution. A receptacle installed behind a refrigerator does not require GFCI protection. We covered that. Unless it is installed within six feet of the top inside edge of the bowl or the sink, okay, then it would be required to be GFCI protected. And for heaven's sakes, don't put the device behind this, the uh, refrigerator. Uh, that's uh, a little common sense, probably, approach to that. All right. All right, we're continuing on with the kitchen countertop receptacles. It says, and again, you see some good illustrations here. It says, required, recept required receptacle outlets used to serve the kitchen countertop must be located, one, on or above the countertop surface, but not more than 20 inches. So it can be on or above it, not more than 20 inches, okay, the work surface. Number two, in the countertop, if listed for the purpose, so it could be actually built into the countertop, not face up, but maybe a tombstone or one of those ones that pop up out of the countertop, that is perfectly fine. So that's what it means that it can be in the countertop if it's listed for that. And number three, not more than 12 inches below the work surface, okay? Now this is still allowed in the 2020 edition of the National Electrical Code. All of this changes for the 2023, by the way, and we're gonna cover that in 2023 episodes, but we're in the 2020, so that is perfectly acceptable. All right, now it says, receptacles installed below a countertop or work surface shall not be located where the countertop or work surface extends more than six inches beyond its support base. All right, so let's see here. Let's look at this illustration here. So here, this receptacle right here, this is C. Obviously it's GFCI protected, it's, it's in the kitchen, and it can't be more than 20 inches above the countertop. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it also could be right here on the side, as long as it's not, any part of this receptacle is not more than 12 inches below the top of the countertop. And also, if there's an overhang right here, this overhang, and here's the support base right here. This is the part you measure, not this part that might protrude out, but this part, this is the base support. This overhang cannot be more than six inches beyond this support base. If it is over six inches, 
then you can't put the receptacle there because the cord would extend over and around underneath the actual countertop. So that wouldn't work, okay? Also, I'll remind you something. Uh, this receptacle down here, this is the wall space receptacle. It cannot serve the countertop spacing, right? It is to serve the wall space requirement. So this measurement starts right here and you have to have a receptacle within six feet. So that's what that's serving, okay? So now we'll look at the callouts to kind of tie all these things together. So here's A. Again, A was talking about the 12 inches below, so this can't be more than 12 inches below the surface, and that's important because that also applies to islands and things like that. Um, next, B says GFCI protection is not needed for receptacles installed along the wall to meet 210.52A, and that's what this one is for right there, okay? Uh, requirements, unless the receptacle is installed within six feet of the top inside edge of the bowl of the sink. So this one right here, if it's within six feet of the top inside edge of this bowl, and again, you measure it as the crow flies, folks. So it's not like you go down, here, down, and then over. It would be a measurement like pulling a string from here to the edge and then at an angle down to here. If this was within six feet, then it has to be GFCI protection. Even if it's for the wall spacing, it's still within six feet of the sink, so it has to be GFCI protection. Same for this one. Obviously, if this is to serve the countertop, then it would be GFCI protected. But if it, say it wasn't to serve the countertop, if it still was within six feet of the top inside edge of the sink or bowl, it still would require GFCI protection, right? Now, what about these that are inside the cabinet, maybe for the garbage disposer, uh, or maybe a dishwasher, maybe you using a plug and cord application for that? Well, let's look at these receptacles inside of the cabinet. So D and E. D says, receptacles located inside a cabinet or cupboard which do not serve kitchen countertop surfaces, right? Because it's in a cabinet or cupboard, it's not on the counter, do not require GFCI protection unless the receptacle is supplying power to a dishwasher, okay? That type of thing. Now, I'll also tell you this. If that receptacle, check this out. If that receptacle is within six feet of the top inside edge of that basin, then it would require GFCI protection, right? Where does it say that? All right, let's go look because I want to make sure we're all clear on that. All right, so let's go to 210.8 real quick. Uh, first time we've kind of dabbled in 210.8, by the way. All right, so see this right here, the ground fault circuit interrupter protection 210.8, and we're talking about, for the purpose of this section, when determining the distance from receptacles, the distance shall be measured the shortest path, I mean, that means straight line, folks, not measuring the contours, the shortest path the supply cord of an appliance connected to the receptacle would follow without piercing a floor, wall, ceiling, or fixed barrier, or the shortest path without passing through a window. Now, in the 2017 code, it, there was also door and doorway was in here. It's not in here anymore. So, what does that mean? If the receptacle is underneath the cabinet, whether there's a door here or not, if it's within six feet of the top inside edge of that sink, guess what? The receptacle's in there, irrelevant to the fact that it would be supplying something like a dishwasher, which incidentally does require GFCI protection. Um, it would require GFCI protection anyway because it's within six feet of the sink. And they removed door or doorway from this, this measurement back in the 2020. Back in the 2017, there used to be a door provision there. So you didn't have to measure it because there was a door. That's been removed. So again, at that point, it's going to qualify. All right? And you're going to have to have what? And you notice here this, this grayed out language? All of that has, has changes to it. And so it's going to have to have GFCI protection anyway. So keep that in mind. Now, as far as the dishwasher is concerned, uh, that one, so 210.8A6, just so you can see that right here. Here's A6, and this is what it's talking about, where receptacles are installed to serve the countertop. Okay, that's true. 
And then 422.5A7, that has to do with the dishwasher specifically because it's 422, so it's under appliances, right? Um, but I want to draw your attention again to the sink. Where receptacles are installed within six feet of the top inside edge of the bowl or sink is going to require GFCI protection. And when it comes to this measurement, no longer does a door break that measurement, whether it's a cabinet door or whatever, that's gone now. So this would require GFCI protection regardless, because I guarantee you, if you look under the sink and you measure from the edge of the sink, top inside edge, those receptacles are going to be within six feet, okay? And of course, E says receptacles located inside the cabinet cupboard do not count as the required kitchen countertop receptacle. Well, obviously not, okay? Because they're more than 12 inches below. They're in the cabinet, by the way, and they're not in the countertop and they're not within 20 inches of the top of the countertop. So obviously they would not serve the spacing requirement, okay? That just goes without saying. Uh, there is a note. Note says, receptacle outlets are permitted to be installed in countertops or work surfaces, but only if the outlet assemblies are listed for installation in countertops or work surfaces. That's what it says in 210.52C32. Now, they make these devices that you actually cut the hole and these receptacles go down in it. Now, there's two different types they make. Some are hardwired, and those are the ones that are listed that we're talking about. The other ones are cord and plug connected. So you couldn't put the receptacle underneath it, put these in, and then plug them in, and that meet the requirement. That's not going to work. That receptacle is, in theory, under the cabinet and not meeting the rules that we just read. But you can buy those that actually hardwire, and then they pop up above the countertop, or they flip up in the countertop, then those would be okay. That would meet this rule, and they're listed for that, okay? Just don't go buy the ones that have a cord on them with the attachment plug. Those are basically relocatable power taps, but they're designed in a way that they pop up and look all fancy. That's not the same. And you're going to know the difference by the price. The ones that you buy that are listed, that you hardwire, that are going to meet this rule, uh, those are expensive, three and four and five hundred dollars a piece, okay? So significantly more expensive. Uh, but they are listed for this application. Warning. Okay. Oh, I didn't. Sh uh, I'm showing you the code, but I was reading this. So here's the note I was talking about right here. So if you've got the ones that, that are going to be installed in the countertop, have to be listed for that, not the cord and plug kind. They have to be the hardwired kind. Okay. And that is in 21052C32. Another warning. Receptacles installed for countertops and work surfaces as specified in 210.52c shall not be considered as the receptacles required by 210.52a. Okay, so they do not meet the spacing requirement. And I'm going to have to show you, um, I'm not sure, let's see if I got an example of that. Um, let's see. I don't know if I have an example of that, so I'll try to illustrate it. So let's see this right here. Let's look at this picture right here. So what if... Um, this receptacle wasn't here. Let's just say this wasn't here. And I had a door right here. Okay, just picture a door right here. And this receptacle right here is not here. Please, you with me? All right, so that door has a break in the wall space. So I have to have a receptacle within six feet. Well, this wall space over here, let's say I'm counting this right here, and I could not use this receptacle serving the counter to also serve this wall space. This is only for the counter. It's not for the wall space. So all this is saying is the ones for the countertop serve the countertop. The ones for the wall spacing serve the wall spacing. The one on the wall can't serve the countertop. The one on the countertop cannot serve the wall. Now they are probably gonna be on the same small appliance brand circuit, but this is a receptacles placement rule, okay? So it's just something to keep in mind just because the receptacle on the countertop. So, for example, maybe this receptacle is serving the countertop, right? And this overhang is not more than six inches, okay? <clears throat> well, if I have a doorway right here and this is wall space and this receptacle is, with, say, within six feet of this doorway, it could not meet this wall space requirement because it's here to serve the countertop requirement. You can't do double duty. 
And that's what it's trying to say. So it means you're going to have to install a receptacle down here. As long as this wall space is at least what? Two feet. We covered that in another episode. Make sense? All right. All right, folks, that's pretty much the placement. We're going to do a separate video when I talk about islands and peninsulas. Okay. And so look for that video. That's a totally separate one. I really want to just cover the general receptacle spacing requirements in a kitchen. But again, another video, we're going to get into the uh, peninsula and the actual uh, um, island receptacle requirements for the 2020 edition of the NEC. Now, for the 2023, that just goes all out the door. But we're in, if you're in the 2020, then we need to explain it. And we're going to do that in another video. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time with me today. We've been almost an hour in this one. Um, if you really want to learn the National Electrical Code, go right here, FastTrackSystem.com. We also have a bunch of free blogs on our website. Go read those. There's a lot of calculation blogs there. They're free. I have some free courses on there. Um, but if you really want to learn the NEC, get into our Fast Tracks program. You'll be amazed what you'll learn. All right. And you can join us on Wednesday nights and bring your questions. We'd love to have you. All right, folks. Till next time, stay safe. God bless and be safe out there. Um, take care.